Where else do I go then? Wait, when did I get Malice? I have no idea. I feel like that was a good route to take. Give me one second. I need to make sure that my computer isn't dying on me. It's not, okay. There was a Malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Please don't break on me, game. Crete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just uh want this to all be over. Of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Willow at the treehouse. Of, of course. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Get me the hell out of here. Do you have anything to say about the circumstances? He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mom always told me my problems were looking smaller once I grew up, but my problems always seemed to go right along with me. That means I sense big trouble ahead. Identify yourself, please. Nellie Modewell. I work here now. I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. That was weird. Whoa! You can get a wrench to the noggin sticking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kinda late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Bah, ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by throwing, looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. Okay, I'm just making sure there's nobody else to talk to. Okay. Anything new to say? Hey, Jetson. Have you seen Rollo come this way by any chance? Afraid not. An elusive as this fish in this here pond. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the woods. Rollo! Ah. <sighs> Rollo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. He felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Once Another again, dream. Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Lucas Doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. This 
Is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to- As real as you believe you are. Or believe they are. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Yeah, that's what I meant. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. This is just so sad. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Uh oh. Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Stop right there. Who are you? Well, geez, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Oh, you're Rolo, except you're older. Who are you? The figure cocked its head inquisitively. Stop, Nora. I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? Haha, <laughs> Uncle? Luca, quit missing around. It's me! If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. His jaw dropped. He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo. Only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. I think it was an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big. Look! Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Well, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. What the? His hands shot up to his face. Holy Toledo! What did Toledo ever do to you? Rolo, what did they do to you? Exactly. They made me drink some kind of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. Oh. Solomon, licorice. Nice. It all ties together. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kind of. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're going to fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Oh, I know what happened to the family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Ha! Rillo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rolo dove behind Luca. Ah! Take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you just hanging out here with your orange adult friend? Ah, no, this is my buddy Rolo. This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry, you're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? 
You see only a little treehouse? I think you mean our city little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear you racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Willow. Beck, you said you said something bizarre happened. Yeah, she but she shot a nervous glance at Rollo. Anything you can say around me, you can say around Rollo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Oh yeah, I forgot that the goop landed on her, too. Okay. Just need to play it cool. And hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... <sighs> Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. The thing is, this is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving in. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. I tried to put on a smile. Before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go to work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade A creep. Beck! He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough to her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The yeah, people are weird. <laughs> <coughs> You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains, you'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival, but not another peep. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? No. I'm sorry you got in trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great, can we get back to the story now? The next part is the important bit. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on your new lead researcher of deep engineering? Nellie Monwell seems to be in integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor. I think I'm going to give up the on the voices from now on because my voice is going and I don't really want to strain it anymore. Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's accomplished. Good, you know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, 
She will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay, just for a bit. Oh? It just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like, actually killing someone? Capital murder? Gave Rolo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we even have a topper banana on the field. What the hell is my mom caught up in? Hasn't she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... the person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nelly's predecessor's predecessor got, um... loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't she just come home after work? The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her in there until then. So if she's not coming out, we got to go in and get her. a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. 28 stab wounds. No. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Maybe. Well, it's well... It's really just a welcome map for my mom's PH orientation day, but it shows the layout. Sure, it looks like blue blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits, exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an ejector. We have blueprints. You, re you realize what this is, right? I started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist! Chapter 6 The Heist They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology, not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. Alright, quick recap. Rollo, you're gonna talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz... This whole thing could go bust. Me, Cordio is my middle name. Uh huh. And how do you explain? How do you plan to explain your new? Vaguely at Rollo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bah! She'll be so happy I'm alive. She won't even notice. An involuntary giggle. And Beck, you sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? She'll listen once she understands that. The danger Nellie is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay, this leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. How are you gonna persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence and nodded. Well, Godspeed! And this the help of Jeff, and this the help of Iggy and Tish. This took a turn that I was not expecting. Okay, I'm gonna fish because I have more uh, things now.
Luca tied a small magnet to the line, fishing with the law of attraction. I don't know how many um things I still need. A key. What do you think the lock is for this key? Now, why would we want to find that? Then we would know the secret. Ah, that's no fun. The second we know what it unlocks, it just becomes a boring old key. By now, this key could lock, unlock anything. Cool. Luca wrapped a twig of thyme around the hook. Some fish have refined taste. Is that a watch? Probably a sharper valentine. Figures. If he had his way, probably a sharper valentine would be written on everything in this town. Should we give it back to him? He may not even want it back. This man's got a contentious relationship with time. We'll keep it here in case he ever wants to pick it up. And one more. Luca stuck a toy I feel like I'm missing a singular one. Those things always get dirty anyway. Should we give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's a sweet thought, Buckaroo, but I'm not sure she'll fully appreciate a pawn bracelet. That's all I can do for now. Okay, I can't talk to you right now. Can't talk with you. You gonna stop me? No, okay. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No? Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow, I admire the conviction, but can he really pull through? I feel like this is the last path I can take. Wait, where are they? I don't know. No, but like really, where are they? Uh, let's go this way first. Oh, you are wondering. You ever wondered why an agricultural company employs an army of survey takers? Survey takers. The clipboards. They say they're just trying to make us happy. There's a typo. I hate it. Do they want to make us happy, or just figure out what makes us happy? An important distinction. Where are they? I don't know. Hey Jeff, what can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. Gotcha. So we're gonna break into their headquarters and I thought you might be able to help. Wheezed out a long snicker. Hehe. <laughs> you see, I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll help? And Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my hide eating and abetting you rascals. The sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice. Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Hmm. Junk. Yeah, what of it? Sonny, I've got more junk than a king as copper. Ain't interested. He shouted out a Okay. Jeff's brow perked up. What'd you say? Go ahead and hide then. Traction. Luca carried on with vigor. Let a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. Was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was you what was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise? I got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. That ain't gonna be free, you know. I'm thinking five bags of sour gobs should cut for it. Put it on my tab. Offered out his open hand to seal the deal. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. 
done. Swing by first thing in the morning. Okay, that's that. But where are the other two? Um, let's go in here. Okay, you have nothing to say. And you have nothing to say. Okay. I say the other... Yeah, this is the other two. Because I need to enlist both of them. There you are. Hey, Tish. Look who it is. Luca, are you here to try to tickle us to death again? Look, just hear me out. Raised an eyebrow suspiciously. Hold on. We're listening. Iggy, I know you... I know we've been both giant bags of... Shit to each Iggy other. A reluctant shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of... Strange, you know? Considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say, we... Break our his hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if a tru truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into perennial harvest HQ. Grin spread across Iggy's face. My my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after all this is all done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. Not, but not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause chaos. With a quick nod, Luca was off. There we go. Did you hear that, Tish? He gazed up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. I never expected this day to come. <gasps> oh my god. How wonderful. Chapter seven. Spoke words for the first time. To the hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff. Iggy and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Okay. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect. But a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Okay, give me one sec and I'll be right back. Sorry. Anyways, I just had to turn on um, a room fan because it was getting warm in here. His arms. Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Got your delivery here. A uh, delivery? Hmm, I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery schedule for this morning. Right. He had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept secret. Side, <clears throat> adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache, Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about. Yeah, this is a need to know kind of thing. Um, I'll just check. Stammered and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder. I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. With urgency in his voice. 
every time at the forums. Look, if you want to explain to the founder why I'm late, well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry. What did you say your name was again? I'm, uh... Panicked. Our harvest awaits. Sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir. Where do I go? Our harvest awaits. Ready to light this candle, Tish? Yep. Suck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? Was enough for Rollo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I've got a job to do. Fumbled around in a frenzy. I. I should check on that noise. Oh come on! Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> Phew. That was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure. When in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one. But you put it off. Nice work, Rollo. <clears throat> Alright, everyone knows what to do. Yep, deep engineering is to the north. I'll go with back. In case you need some muscle. I'll head east to the founder's office. And you two be safe. Can I actually go this way? Okay. That's odd. There's not even any cups for the water. Okay, that goes down the hallway. Solomon? Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca? What are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up. When they, did, when they were distracted, I ran. Dang, okay, you should stick with me. We got a plan. Facade briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Roland and Beck are headed to deep engineering. Why are you telling him your plan? Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. We can't just leave yet. But they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into that office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just down this way. Luca happened to notice a plaque above the door. Office of the Founder? Knocking comes with consequence. Oh, here it is. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you, or else I might have missed it. God dang it. I wanted to look around a little bit more. Maybe I would have found some more uh, charms. Luca tried the handle. Locked. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we, could possibly defeat a lock like that. And looked at his watch. Let's just wait a minute. I don't know what sort of funny business you're up to, but I like it. She mind a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. Howdy. Good afternoon. The what were the odds, though? From red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Okay, let's get inside before someone spots us. Ah. Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at a locked door, Mark. 24601. You need us to get us. You need you. We need you to get us through. Can't can't read. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have any way to get around the password. Hmm. Pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers <coughs> Did you just use the password for everything? 
The same password, I should say. How- How did you just guess that? Oh, it's this absurd password Roller heard when he was down here before. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Boy, they would think he's several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to guess something so simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are in as impressive as your luck. Vicar quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Well, though, I think this should do it. Bingo, bingo, doors open. Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery loud even doing down there? We have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. Okay, Luca, I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. And once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. <laughs> yeah, I've had a feeling. Crap, we've got company. Luca, must go faster. One sec, I think... I can't think with all this noise. He skimmed the screen with his finger. Here it is, 13806. Go, go, go. Curse these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help. I knew that was going to happen. It's like, big red button, that's an alarm. Oh man, no water cups. Rollo! Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in! Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie talkie. You can turn off the alarms, they're trapped! Self satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end! Nowhere to run! Rolo, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost him. Making our way back to Nelly's office. You two rabble-rousers are coming with us. Nope. Kick in the knee. You learn from the best. Make a break for it. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't just stand there after them. Oh, I think that worked. Roxy and Fix have them on a wild goose chase. I am having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rolo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? <clears throat> Let's just say we've got time. How did they get in? It's like, I understand that it's like we came in through like a box and it's like, oh, it was a distraction. But how did they get in? Oh, I, didn't, I think I just skipped over dialogue again. Entering Nellie's office now. Mom? Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the young chemist's lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. We? Who is your adult friend? Oh, I'm not an adult adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? I had more of a growth spew. No, that's not possible. Nelly leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars consistent with Tempest Liquamine exposure. Is this what you call the gunk they forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh, oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the hell is going on at this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under Beacon Pines in a wellspring they called the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter, alter matter's relationship to time. It was a secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the Source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically acceler accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time. But it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more, the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more of it, it the more it resists. Yes. 
I can relate to that. My role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival, but you didn't, right? You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into the problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Dr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contain obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them and, and now I need to get now I get to replace my entire wardrobe. And I really am truly sorry. Man, these clothes were all hand me downs anyway. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured out figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility, I sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Kerr had, him, Kerr had him killed. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we gotta get you out of here. I just... Like, now. Wait, the vial. I finally solved the chemical equation allowing direct con control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. Luca, we've got Dr. Moldwell heading your way now. Roger that, be careful. Alright, everything's on track. What is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when they get here. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Let's see what this boy, bad boy has on it. Security system, time card logs, payroll. You know, but being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Yeah, I know your dirty secrets now. Malice so... Malice 80 proof whiskey. I thought they said malice so proof. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. A hard drink for a hard man. Wow, even his alcohol is ar arrogant. Muttered under his breath. I should, I should just smother you right now. What's that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be, don't be silly. You're no bother at all. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're gonna get you out of this, I promise. Subtle, quivering lip. A smile crawled across Solomon's face. Hmm. Looks like the founder was helping Kurt plan the festival. Why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party? Only time would tell. He held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. You must have been in here recently. I thought there was something else. Apparently not. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be the good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you suspect suspected. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it! Locked. That was close. When we left Nellie's office, it was swar swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Rollo? Before we start tossing blame around... Is it possible somebody ordered a pizza? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me, I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? Of course. Everyone else, huddle up. He's gonna unlock the door. Yup, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child, the adults are speaking. Dr. Modwell, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child, the powerful enigma enigmatic founder. I had trouble saying that. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest, valentine fertilizer, all connected by a single thread. Yours truly. But that's... Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly. 
waiting for the flicker of Epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. Ha, huh, yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine, you discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. Very good, Dr. Mordwell. Very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. And the effects went a little too far for my taste. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work, which you did admirably. Mr. Kerr, the vial, please. Kerr presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. And that's when you smash, smash it out of his hands. May I present you to the eighth wonder of the... the vial from Kerr's palm. Yeah, exactly. Wow, this stuff sounds pretty valuable. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil villain monologue thinking about it. Casually toss the vial to Luca. Gosh, maybe I'll have a taste. Luca jiggled the vial mockingly. Seize him! Luca! Over here! Move another inch and I'll smash she it. held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips with feigned sincerity. Well, is there a bunch more of this stuff? Or are you just going to hire somebody new? But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. Deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. We both know there was only one way this ends. She looked to Nellie shakily. With a dispirited nod, Nellie sighed in defeat. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it! We can't trust that jerk! I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. What are you doing? Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. What are you doing? We just did all of that for no reason at this point. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> Mr. Kerr, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve, and don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think, all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? Ha! I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn. Your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be part of something great, but the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in a, an attempt to sabotage my work. Solomon shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me his true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. Muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. After the festivities of my subsequent ascension, I will return to deal with you all. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failures. You three keep posts outside the door. I just, I just had a thought. What if she switched out the the thing, the vial, with something else? It didn't show it really, but I have that feeling where he's gonna drink and I was like, ah. <coughs> anyways, you three keep posts outside the door. Well, crap. Hey, I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know it's just, we were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. Well, time seems like less of an issue for him now.
Nelly was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to calm my mind. Can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. You're not Charles because you're not the man with a plan. Well, though, you just need some time. Well, though, it's over. We lost. Luca, there's something you should know. About... After Mr. Kern locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at Perennial Harvest was going short, so he left behind a letter with the hope it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents... Look, I think they were meant for you. Why? What did it say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen keycard. It was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of tempest liquid. I knew it. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did she? Is she? She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted perennial harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Science is often, often the vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I, I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where has she been? Where is she now? A sudden explosion sounded from the hull. Chapter 8. Comeuppance. Ears still ringing, Gran picked herself up off the ground. Through the dust and smoke, she looked over to see Mrs. Fratelli helping Hiram Tolliver to his feet. She'd had to beg, borrow, and steal to acquire those explosives. How many nights had she spent visualizing how she'd use them to make things right? And now, her one shot at destroying the source, that damned hole that swallowed so much of her life, was gone. Traded for this jagged hole in a wall and a foolhardy shot at rescuing Rollo. With Fratelli and Tolliver at her side, she stepped through. It was a strange feeling. The last time she'd stalked this maze of hallways, it was in a different body. They quickly rounded a corner to find a group of clipboards guarding a door. Something worth guarding is probably something worth seeing. She leapt forward, brandishing her cane. If her last chance at vengeance for things lost was truly gone, she would just have to fight to keep what she still had. Huh. Okay. Oh, hi. Gran, what are you doing here? Luca, what are you doing here? We're here to save Nelly. We're here to save Rolo. Hey, uh, Mrs. Luca's Gran. That's awful nice of you. But I'm fine. Oh no, what do they... Gran, there's no time to explain. We have to go now. Come on, everyone. We got a party to crash. They made their way out from deep within perennial harvest, just as Solomon finished up his speech. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. We gotta stop him. Smooth motion, he downed its contents. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. This is when you should say, um, that's actually a uh, sharper Valentine. That's not actually Solomon. It's like, say it before he transforms. No! Well, I guess that's it. We lost. Wouldn't be so sure about that. Unless, unless my theory With a mischievous right. look, Beck elbowed Luca. Remember when I had the vial behind my back? I might have tweaked his wonder portion with a little... Malice. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little malice. Malice? The whiskey from his office? Yep, do it at an unfinished glass on his desk. Thinking his grow juice could use a little hair of the dog. You can all call me Sharper his Valentine. And face began to 
contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. I feel like that was wrong. That was the wrong choice. Oh. Now that's why I call 80 poof whiskey. Boo! Boo! Get off the stage! Damn, dude. The crowd gazed in stunned silence at the now empty stage. The quiet was broken when William Kerr sprinted off stage and into the distance. He was never seen around Beacon Pines or anywhere else for that matter again. Fuck this shit, I'm out! Watching the silhouette of Kerr disappear over the horizon, Luca began to laugh. First, a low chuckle that became uncontrolled, heaving laughter. Through his tears, he was vaguely aware that the crowd had begun to laugh with him. The end. That was... unexpected. Yep. Perhaps a bit of an absurd ending for my taste, but who am I to say? I'm only writing the damn thing. Huh. I think the right answer is change. With a little junk. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he realizes he drank his own cigar mm -hmm. ash. Is he gonna catch on fire? How did ashes get into the vial? It was pretty, pretty easy to mess with the vial when it was behind my back. Oh, that's sneaky. Well, it's a bad habit anyways. I always said bad habits are like 50 yard field goals. Huh? Hard to kick. Boo. I hate you. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. And face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. Oh, he turned into a pile of ash. Huh. Well, that's one way to kick a bad habit. Good. Good for you, Rolo. As the last of what was once Sharper Valentine wafted into the air, the crowd began to disperse, still numb from what they had just observed. Sharper Valentine was gone for good. His end would be a new beginning for Beacon Pines. A new chance to let go of the things they had lost and grab hold of a new future. The end. Well... I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a bit gratifying. If that feels to you like a good note to end on, I won't stand in your way. No, because there's one more option. I might have tweaked his wonder potion with a little change. I feel like this is the last, like, branch. Like, pocket change? Your unlucky penny! Oh my god, that's actually a really good, like, plot device. Yep, I plopped it in the vial when no one was looking. What's that gonna do? No idea, that's the beauty of science. Now we observe. You can all call me Sharper His Valentine, blah blah blah. His began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. What is this gonna do? Oh, he went backwards. Huh. Interesting. Holy crap, he's a baby? Yeah, but he's still sharper, right? What he was what he was no longer matters. This is an innocent child. I apologize for all the harm my father has caused you. Eris awkwardly cradled the squirming child. She looked to her brother, her voice shaking with uncertainty. Augustus, what do we... We do what Valentines always do. We must... What must be done? I'll hurry home and prepare a crib for father... Uh, younger Sharp... Young Sharper. That would be a great help. Thank you. She looked back down at the infant with equal parts kindness and terror in her eyes. With a shake of her head, Eris addressed the crowd with a stern scowl. Okay, everyone. The show is over. You may leave now. Epilogue. 
Yep, there we go. Beacon Pines' coldest summer on record came and went without much fanfare. Folks shared what they had and none were left wanting. The new school year was ushered in by the falling leaves of autumn. After everything Luca, Rollo, and Beck had been through, middle school was bearable. The chill of winter didn't seem to bother people much. Oh, is he not going to learn that Grant is actually his mom? They kindled a hope for a better future in their hearts. When spring arrived, farmers planted their crops with a sense of joy and optimism. And as the dawn of the first day of summer came again, its light slowly spread through the shallow valley. It crept over the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, and came to rest on a young boy sleeping at dawn. His mind at peace, knowing he is here for a reason. Want to talk with Graham? Mom, I'm ready to go now. You go on. You go on without me. I'll meet you there. I've got a batch of jam to finish jarring. It's funny. I only started making jam as a way to send messages without anyone noticing, but now I enjoy it. All right, I'll go say hi to Olo first. Well, that answers my question. I hear you and Rolo have big plans for that little treehouse. Yeah, it started getting crowded after we revoked the max, max capacity one Rolo, one Luca rule. So we decided to expand. But at least we got some help with that. How's the internship at Nelly and Alona's shop going? It's been great. I'm hoping it helps me get into the School of Agriculture up at State. Also, Nelly said she'd write a letter of, letter of recommendation, which would be huge. I just can't help but worry about leaving Rolo. He's grown up so fast, but he's still my little brother. Yeah, he had heck of a growth spurt. I don't just mean grown, literally. This morning he was up and I finished his chores before I finished his chores before I even had breakfast. Well, some of that might be his excitement about the treehouse renovations. Don't tell him this, cause it'll go to his head, but I'm really proud of that little punk. I'm sure he feels the same way, but he's just too dang proud to tell you. I know. I kind of want to go check the, uh, to see if there's a grave up there, or like, because I know it wants me to go to the treehouse. No, it doesn't even look, look like the grave is here anymore. I want to explore everything I possibly can before I finish this out. Visitors. The welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. That's fair. Hey guys, how's the tree planting going? Could it be better? I'm so grateful to Alona and Nelly for letting me help. I just wasn't built to be a mayor. Too much bureaucracy. Yes, we finished cleaning up the sidewalks. What's next? The perennial harvest collapsed. Most of the clipboards skipped town. But some stuck around and dedicated themselves to making things right. Oh, that's nice. Anyone with a knack for art can help paint the new offices. You can count on us. Well, well, it looks like you really found your calling. I never really felt comfortable telling people what to do. Now this right here... This is something I can be proud of. I love how... People are like, like, doing what's right now. How's the nap in this morning? The most underrated part of a good nap is the view. And the view is getting greener every day. Nice. It's like I was expecting to say, like, I hate it. I see you decided on a name. Yep, we had to clear out all the old stuff before putting on the final touch. Slow and Dirty Harvest is now official. I like it. It was actually Nelly's idea. There's still a lot of work to do and the name serves as a reminder. Just because progress is important doesn't mean change should happen fast. In fact, I've learned that the more you care about something, the more important it is to take things slow. 
Our motto is, go slow and fix things. Amen to that. Okay. I just thought maybe I could go explore the town a little bit before I finish it off, but okay. Luca, get this! I managed to wheel in an actual fish this morning! Seriously? Yeah, and honest to goodness! Flip flopping, swim swamming, fish! I don't think I've ever caught an actual fish here. Been at least seven years since I've caught one. I see it's a good omen. What'd you do with the fish? Oh, I really sit back into the pond. I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to catch it again tomorrow. Do I have one final one to do? Okay, so I'm popping back in here because I went off and I did um, a little bit of digging and apparently I only have one of those fishing cards left and then I've c completed all the achievements for this game. So I wanted to at least get the last one and then go get the last thing because I just want to see if there's anything new to see. If not, then we'll just keep going from there, so yeah. The last thing is right here. I didn't realize this was a thing I could interact with the first time I was through the scene. Crooked, just like this whole stinking place. The last one. Crooked. You tied a bent nail onto the line. If all you have is a hammer... Last one. I almost forgot to uh, wait for the thing. This probably isn't going to do anything for me, but I just wanted to get it and uh, edit it into the video. It's a photo of you and Uncle Joseph. Let me see that. Huh, look at those two young fools. How did it end up at the bottom of the pond? Who can say? Some things are just hard to explain. I miss Uncle Joseph. How come he doesn't come fishing with us anymore? He's, uh, busy with his new job at Valentine's. What's a new job got to do with him fishing with us? It's complicated. Like I said, some things are hard to explain. Well, that's quite a haul. Feels like a good time to pack up. Aw, just a little bit longer. If things lasted forever, they might not feel as special, huh? I guess. I'll make you a deal, buckaroo. If you ever feel like you need to talk about anything at all, you just say, let's go fishing, and I'll know what you mean. Like a secret password? Yup, top secret. Neat. Or am I missing one? I'm missing one. That's unfortunate. I don't, I don't need to fish. I think I'm missing one anyways. I could be wrong. A little higher. Yup. Little lower. Yup. Little higher. Yup. I'm telling you, the angle isn't the issue. We need more power to the radio. Luca, there you are. Would you tell him it's not the angle? Hey, I'm not in charge of, atten of antenna redesign. <coughs> fine, fine. Iggy, just don't do anything drastic until we get back. Who, me? Tish, you're in charge while I'm gone. Yup. It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. If we really want Mission Control to turn into something bigger and better, we have to loosen our grip a bit. Uh, you're right. Lead the way. Oh, I have to go to her house. Okay. That explains that. Um. Young Mr. Van Horn. How's little Sullivan, uh, Sharper doing? Young Sharper seems to enjoy nature more than I. So, we do a lot of strolling these days. Has he, uh, you know, attempted to crawl out of this crib? Out of his crib and plot world domination? Yeah. Thankfully, no. I spoke at length with Dr. Modwell and she feels that Sharper's infant mind was not developed enough to retain his previous memories. For all intents and purposes, the child is unmolded clay. Uh, let's hope he's a little nicer the second time around. That is the objective, yes. But really, all I can do is try and hope. Through activities I am endeavoring to find less distasteful. Well, I think you're doing a great job. The whole town is ready to help out however we can. I can't wait to teach him how to throw a baseball. Did her best to ignore the tears welling in her eyes. 
That would be acceptable. Aww. That's rather sweet. So I can, like, go around and, like, talk with everyone, it seems. Except for that guy, apparently. Mrs. Fratelli glowed with a carefree smile. Is that your suitcase? That is two weeks of encumbered tranquility. Excuse me? Would you be so kind as to take my order? Two weeks of sand, margaritas, and forgotten obligations. Excuse me? I'd love to place an order. Mrs. Fratelli sighed with a zen-like calm. Just as soon as the lunch rush, uh, lunch rush ends, I'll be a feather on the wind. You're going on vacation? For the first time in years. And I've got you and your mom to thank. Why's that? She didn't tell you yet? You two are going to fill in for me at the diner while I'm gone. Just like old times. It's fine, I'll wait. Okay. Okay, I don't think there was really anything to look at in here. Talk with you. Oh. I'm glad you swung by. More follow-up questions for your story? Nope, I got everything I need. Thanks again for that. I sent a draft of the story to a reporter in Capital City, and they offered me an, in an internship. Of course they did. You're an amazing reporter. I don't know about all that. A story about a phony corporation? They picked up an entire town of people and moved them to cover up a mass massive illegal mine shaft full of incredibly hazardous chemicals? Sort of right itself if you think about it. <coughs> Man, my my voice is going. Just don't forget a, don't forget us when you become a fancy big city reporter. Capital City isn't that far away. I'm gonna have to come back from time to time to check in and see what sort of new trouble you've gotten yourself into. Sorry to disappoint, but my adventuring days are over. Ha! We both know that's not true. What makes you say that? Call it a reporter's intuition. Yeah, there's probably more to see. Oh, I almost missed you. What's today's news that needs knowing? I'll give you tomorrow's headline today. Our old friend Patrick C. Montesquieu, aka William Kerr, just performed a stirring rendition of the Iceman Cometh at the State Correctional Facility. I hear there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Well, I guess he has plenty of time to work on his craft. Oh, so he got arrested and sent to jail. Interesting. Look at do you want a biscotti? On the house? I don't really have time. Zero, you gotta come and see this. I finally did it. I pulled the perfect express espresso. Aw, Lumi. If I didn't know better, I would th I would think you're proud of something. <laughs> As if I... No. It's too late. You are now officially a person that cares. Aw, that's sweet. Okay, what do you have to say? Something about the story ending? He looked to his friends with a thankful smile. After everything that could have gone wrong, everything that that did go wrong, we made it. The end. Closing her eyes, Miss Hatch took a deep, relaxing breath. Oh, hello, Luca. How are you? Really good, actually. That's wonderful. Did I miss anything? Uh, I think you're pretty much up to speed. Nice. Wow, back for seconds? If it's not too much trouble. For the longest time, I didn't understand the appeal of ice cream. It serves no purpose, other than to be briefly enjoyed and then it's gone. But it's pretty tasty while it lasts. I'm inclined to agree. Hey Luca, can you tell Roxy I'll be free in an hour? Sure thing. My dad's making me stock the shelves for the summer. He said it builds character. I think he meant to say it builds calluses. Builds character. Yeah, Bill's something all right. Luca, can I interest you in a delicious apple? An apple? No thanks, just saying hello. Well, hello then. Mind telling your mom we need a new crate of jam? Already? It's funny, I used to hide the stuff back in the day. Or in the back, I should say. Terrified that someone would find out about our secret messages. Now everyone wants to get their hands on Eleanor Van Horn's famous spy jam. Nice. <coughs> hey, Mr. Nuncreen. I'm gonna go see my dad in a bit. Did you want to come with? Even after everything I did, you still... Mr. Nuncreen shook his head. You really are your father's son, aren't you? I don't think I'm ready for that yet. 
Well, you're always invited. I bet he'd love to hear from you. I'll visit Walt in my own time. You run along now. Okay. I almost forgot to go in here. There's more people to talk to. I can't believe it's over. Yeah, the town's really starting to turn a new leaf. The town? I was talking about Hank Atomic. I just finished the last issue. Wow, how was it? As great as always, Hank finally returned to Earth. But I just feel weird now. Weird can be cool. It just means you're ready for something new. Any suggestions? You could ask Miss Hatch about what she's always reading. She seems to really enjoy it. Huh, maybe I'll do that. Hmm. Over the school year, Kato and Bert had become close friends. But did you know that? When they covered up the source, they found a new species of fungus. Yup, and they are, they are studying it in the new labs. Did you know that? Beacon Pines is now the smallest town in the county? Yep, close to the population before perennial harvest moved in. It typically went on like this for quite some time. Nice. Okay, talk with this person and then I'll go into the woods. Luca peeked over Piper's shoulder, laid stealthily inside a large volume of mathematics, was the first issue of Hank Atomic. Piper, are you reading Hank Atomic? Um, do you mind not telling anyone? I've kind of got a reputation to uphold. Oh, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Just about every kid in town reads Hank Atomic. Honestly, I'm excited for you. What I'd give to start over fresh, to experience again, it again for the first time. I guess that's the downside of finishing something nice. At least now I can enjoy it again through you. Promise to tell me about it as you go? Sure thing. Aww, that's actually really sweet. Oh, hi. All these... Jeff's Wild Ride. With perennial harvest gone, the transportation tubes were left unused. Come on, come on. No one is too big, no one is too small. For Jeff's Wild Ride. Maybe not <coughs> completely unused. Just one piece of candy for the ride of your life. Who's next? Me, 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 me. Guess what? Yesterday I saw a dinosaur titius. Titius. I don't know how to say that. And that's good? It's great. I haven't spotted one of those in years. At this rate, Beacon Pines is going to become the bug capital of the county. I don't know why I'm still able to grab that. Okay, there's nothing here. Well, I don't think there's anything else to do. I have news I think you'll enjoy. This morning I unpacked my last box. You officially moved in. It's just a box. Let's not blow this out of proportion. It sounds an awful lot like putting down roots. I guess I decided this place is root worthy. You're going to be stuck with me for the foreseeable future. I do have to warn you, most years aren't going to be as interesting as this one. I think I'll manage. Ready? Before we go, there's a bit of a surprise. My mom prepared this tree especially for you. They didn't have to do that. It wasn't just them. Just about the whole town pitched in. We all owe you. It should do okay in the cold of old Beacon Pines and thrive as things warm up. That's perfect. When you're ready, take Jeff's wild ride to Old Beacon Pines. Oh. We're gonna go plant it at the grave. That's actually a really sweet send-off for this game. Ah, you got it! Now that's a good-looking tree! Being a special occasion and whatnot, the ride's on the house. You're going to want to hang on tight to that little tree. I think this is it. The end I've been waiting for. <laughs> Honestly, I began to lose hope of ever finding it. But then you came along. Aww. I 
I don't know exactly how to thank you. It's hard to explain how much this means to me. It's funny, now that our time together is finally ending, I'm at a loss for words. Let's just watch the end together. Done. A good little dream. The best little dream. Thank you, children. This means a lot. Yeah, thanks for everything. Shucks, I only did what any super awesome best buddy would have done. We should probably give you some time alone now. You good? Yeah, I am. It's been a wild year. How are you feeling? Everyone keeps asking me that. I'm fine, really. Pa always says the only thing fitter than a fiddle is a cello. I feel like a dang cello. Well, if you ever stop feeling like a cello, I'm here for you. I know, you don't have to say it. You two make an awesome pair. Excuse me? We are a trio now. Yep. I... Thanks. There's just one thing missing now that you're part of our group. Missing? Let me tell you a little story about a name... A man named Hank Atomic. Oh, God. I won't be long. We'll be waiting for you back at the phone booth. I found the perfect way to start our summer. You got some good friends. I'm so proud of you. Your father would be so proud. I know. Mom, can I ask you a question? Do you have a dream about Dad? Not a night goes by that I don't. Are you ever afraid that you're going to forget him? Forget what he looked like? Forget his voice? No, because so much of him lives on in you. He loved that old tree, but I know he would have loved this one more. Because his two favorite people planted it. I'll give you two a moment. And now we're back to where we started. Hey, Dad. Dr. Modwell says that over the next few years, this place should warm up. So you won't have to be so cold for much longer. I think I finally understand why you left that night. There were things you believed in. Big things. Those beliefs were the things that made you, you. If you wouldn't have stood up to Sharper, stood up for what you believed in, you wouldn't have been the same person anymore. You had to go, but that doesn't mean you loved us any less. I might not visit you as much as I used to. I know you understand. Oh. Wow. Wow. Like, I'm with the narrator. I'm at a. I'm at a loss for words. Like, I have not played a game that have me like this invested in a long, long time. Um, because the story was absolutely phenomenal. Matt Meyer did a really good job. Like, he did a lot of stuff. Holy crap. Like, look at all these people. Oh my god. Like, story, phenomenal. Art style, very, very, like, great. I loved it. Uh, character work, superb. Like, I can't give enough praise to this game. It was very. It was a roller coaster, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm at a loss for words. It's like, this was such a great game. It's like, there's probably a few things that I missed. Um, I feel like I missed one of the fishing things. I could be wrong. I'll go. I'll go back and check everything, um, after. After I sign off, but, um, yeah, I'll get through the credits and then I'll sign off. Wow, that's a lot of backers, Jesus. 
I think this is more backers for a game than I've ever seen in like a credit scroll like credit scroll. Wow. Like they deserve all of the all of the backings, every single bit of support that they got for this game. Also, the music was very great throughout. Like it's it fit the it fit the scenes and it felt the sto it fit the story so well. Now I apologize that I didn't the voices weren't consistent. I tried to do voices, but as time goes on, they started to become different, I guess. And like because I've been playing this for several hours now, my voice is just going, so I just gave up in the middle of it. So I apologize about that. It's like I started playing this again around like 3, 4 o'clock and it's 4 hours later. Um, but I hope you forgive me for that. Man, I, this is a lot of people. It's like thousands and thousands of people. I don't even think like... Like... A lot of games even do this type of thing where it's like yeah it's like sometimes they like have like maybe like a thousand people but this seems like thousands and thousands and thousands of people holy crap we're only in the s's hey it's morbid time it's more fin time but still The Creative Fun by Backer Kid. Okay. I don't think that's an actual thing, but who knows. Oh, you couldn't even get through the entire scroll. Boo. And we're back to the title sequence. So we're back at the very beginning. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is going to do it for Beacon Pines. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I did. Um, I, I have an inkling suspicion of what I'm going to play next, but I'll save that as a surprise. But in the meantime, thank you everyone for watching. I'm not good with outros, so I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye!